welcome. Uh, this is a communion Sunday, so for those of you uh, on the uh, internet, if you have your uh, bread or cracker and your juice or water, or you have an opportunity to get it, that a girl, Ruth, uh, and uh, we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper, so uh, those of you online may uh, want to get your elements ready. We have a few announcements uh, that we would like to share with you. Parish Council will have its October meeting Tuesday, and uh, reminding you that that is an open meeting uh, for anyone in the uh, co constituent churches of the Southeast Duchess Parish. Um, and there are uh, instructions on Zoom connection. There is a uh, the meeting ID and passcode are in here. Uh, so if you would like to join, the instructions are there. Our traditional ham dinner, number 63, Holly, is that, is that right? That's correct. Number 63 in a row uh, will be ha happening on November the 2nd. And uh, information will be found in your, uh, in your announcements handout. Uh, we'll be doing takeout. Remember, this is one of our primary fundraisers for the Pauling Church, and we hope that you will participate. Anything more, Holly, you want to say? If anybody would like to make a donation to help defray expenses, please either give me cash or make a checkout to have, make a checkout cash so that it can be used for expenses. Thank you. Okay, so Holly says that she is collecting donations. Uh, to underwrite the uh, ha ham dinner, uh, and she will accept checks made out to cash, or cash, or gold bullion bricks, uh, <laughs> and gold doubloons, and those things too. So, thank you. Yes, or, or as Helen said, your firstborn child, if you've gotten yes. tired of that person, so. I agree with that one. Okay, <laughs> yes, so does your mom. Uh, and, uh, the, uh, this is World Communion Sunday. It's uh, a week late, but we are celebrating it today. I draw your attention to the special uh, World Communion special giving envelope in your bulletin today. And uh, it is a celebration and, and uh, contribution to global missions uh, in the Methodist Church around the world. This is a celebration not just of the Methodist Church, but of Christian church churches around the globe to connote the importance of the Lord's Supper, which we will celebrate today. Any other announcements in the Pauling Sanctuary here? Oh, there's one more. Ah, Lois is reminding us that uh, on the 31st, which is uh, three Sundays from now, uh, also on Halloween, right? Um, we happen to be celebrating All Saints Sunday uh, and raising a thank you, a grateful thank you and celebration of those who have gone before us in the last year. So if you have anyone that we wish to lift up in prayer on that Sunday, please let the office know so they can be included in the Sunday bulletin for the 31st. And a reminder that we are now less than a month away from our annual church charge conference, which will be on the 6th of November, which is a Saturday. Uh, it will take place at the Poquag United Methodist Church Fellowship Hall, uh, and it will begin at 11 a.m. And there will be uh, beverages there. You may uh, bring a bag lunch with you since we are going to be meeting over the lunch time. And uh, for those of you who are committee heads or otherwise have contributions to make to the package that we need to submit to our district superintendent, uh, just a reminder to get your reports in. We're hoping to get the majority of the reports in by the end of this week on the 15th. Anyone else? have any announcements they would like to share? Then let us proceed, oops, Patty. Uh, yeah, just real quick, I just thought of, uh, like let everyone know, Col the Conan Ministry, which I'm a rep for from this church, um, we're gonna meet via Zoom this Friday for our annual meeting, and I'll keep everyone apprised of what we discussed. Okay, 
Patty is announcing that the Committee on North, uh, Native American Ministries uh, is having a meeting this Friday, and uh, you may talk to Patty if you have any uh, thoughts or would like more information. Come, let us worship together, and please join me in the call to worship found in your bulletin. God is with his people. He dwells in their midst. Listen and hear him speak. Our hearts flow through his words. We wait upon the Lord so that we may renew our strength. God is our help and our support. His spirit moves among us to lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. With joyful hearts we sing God's praise. With rejoicing we call upon him. And let us continue worship. Join me in the opening prayer. O oh God, Jesus taught that where our treasure is, there will our hearts be also. In this hour, we come bringing our treasures, all that we have and all that we are. We come seeking your treasure, treasure that does not fade, decay, or disappoint. Share with us the treasure of heaven that we may boldly share it with others. Amen. Our opening hymn today is O oh God, Our Help in Ages Past. It is number 117 in the Methodist hymnal, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 6. You may stand if you wish and join us in song. Today's New Testament lesson is from the book of Hebrews. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides souls from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart, and before him no creature is hidden but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one 
to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who is every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. And our gospel lesson today is from Mark chapter 10. It is the story of the rich young man. As Jesus and his disciples were setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you should not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, and honor your father and mother. And the man said to Jesus, Teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. Jesus peered into his eyes and loved the man and said, You lack one thing. Go sell everything that you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. And then come and follow me. When the man heard this, he was shocked and he left immediately, going away grieving because he owned many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is and how hard it will be for those that have great wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were confused by those words. But Jesus then again said to them, my children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is very rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were still astounded and perplexed. And they said to him, well then, who can be saved? Jesus said, for mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Then Peter said to Jesus, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said back to Peter, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields or possessions for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive them back 100-fold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers, children, and fields without persecution. And they will have the age to live called eternal life. And remember, many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. I wanted to thank uh, Reverend Ed Wood, who wrote a, an article online about the interpretation and the enjoyment of reading the Gospel of Mark that I read this week. Uh, Pastor Ed is a, an American Baptist preacher who writes on the New Testament. So let's think about the gospel reading. Jesus is walking along, he's with his disciples, and just imagine that we were with him. We were walking along, enjoying the day, we're walking down the path of life with Jesus. 
Wow, what a wonderful experience that might have, must have been if we could have done that 2,000 years ago. We would have seen many great things. So in our mind, let's, let's walk with him. It's a beautiful day today. We're walking with Jesus and uh, we're enjoying what he says. We're enthralled by his leadership and ministry. And then all of a sudden, we see a young man coming in our direction, and he is really dressed very nicely. You can tell he's a man of means. He has some wealth and other things, and he comes up to Jesus, and he kneels in front of Jesus and says, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So we know in the story that Jesus looks deep into his eyes and he looks into his soul and he saw what the disciples or the rest of the world could not see in that man's eyes. Now the world saw a young man, a handsome man, beautifully dressed, a man who must have been influential and well-respected. But Jesus saw hunger in his heart. He saw an emptiness in his heart. Because the young man had a lot. But Jesus knew he was not satisfied. He longed for a joy and peace that the world was not giving him. As we think about it, I'm sure we know people like that today. The world is full of people who seek joy and peace and other satisfactions, but they're not finding it. They're, some of them, especially the very wealthy, are trotting around the globe, going to wonderful resorts and places that are uh, luxurious and deluxe and exclusive. They're seeking something new, something better that they can brag about. They indulge in all the world can give them. But they're really not satisfied. Deep down, there's still that ache, that emptiness, that void. That those pleasures and the pleasures of sin just is not going to give to them. This is because, as Jesus taught us, they're looking for satisfaction in the wrong place. Now let's think about the story of the young man that we heard in the Bible today. Let's ask a few questions about this story. First of all, what did the young man have? What did the young man have? He had wealth, okay? And this goes right into the fact that some people think that money is everything, all right? If I only had more money, I'd really be happy. If I only had this, then I'd be happy. But many people who have money still remain sad and miserable. Many years ago, Pastor Ed in his article said, there was a preacher who was working on some kind of a project and he worked alongside a young man who was being paid for his participation and the preacher was getting paid a dollar a day. And that other man worked very, very hard on this project and other things and they kept in touch and this man later became a millionaire. And the preacher did not. He was still a poor man of God. And the millionaire said to the preacher later in life, when they met again, that the burdens and responsibilities of great wealth outweighed and dampened the joy of any happiness it might have brought. So it's important for us to note, again, that while the Bible does not condemn making money, the Bible condemns the love of money. Money can do wonderful things. We need it to live. We need it to eat. We need it for our church. 
and it can do good things for God and man if it is made honestly and if it is spent with compassion. The young man also had morality. He could say, I have lived a clean life when Jesus recited some of the Ten Commandments to him in the story. But those things that you do for yourself, the goodness that you proclaim for yourself, is personal, and those things will not bring you salvation or eternal life in God's eyes. Now that young man, for all we know, uh, would have been a good neighbor. After all, he was well-dressed and he connoted that he had good surroundings where he lived. And some people who regarded him might have said, well, that, that man should become a leader. Maybe we'll make him mayor of our village. And if you were in a family that had a marriageable daughter, they might have said, gee, this is the kind of guy I'd like my daughter to marry. And if he were sitting with us in church today, we might have said, hmm, we should invite him to join the church and we'll make him chair of the stewardship committee. <laughs> Human goodness without Christ, however, is not true goodness. So how can we say if a man or a woman is a good person who lives a good life and is good to everyone without that person being a person of God and believing in the teachings and the works of Jesus Christ? Some would say that person must be sad. So others would say a person who rejects the teachings of Christ must be a sinner. A person who rejects Christ and what Christ stands for cannot be a good person. The young man had youth. What a premium society even to this day puts on youth. I know I worked many years in human resources, personnel work. I did lots of recruiting. And I worked in company settings where a premium was put on the young, the well-educated women and men who had the potential to offer something. And especially in the financial services industries, it was very common to hire these young people right out of college or right out of business school because they were affordable and they were hungry, they wanted work. And once they had been hired, it was very common to promote the young people as fast as possible. And so this man had the advantage of youth. We also know he had social rank. He had some social strata. And we know some people who chase that, who try to keep up with the Joneses or be one up on their friends, with material possessions, sometimes do it to their own detriment and the detriment of their families. People who spend money they don't have. They spend it on things that are empty pleasures. And the height of their ambition for those people who chase society's approval is to get their pictures in the paper or to run for office very often. The young man had religion. At least he had a form of religion. He fasted and tithed and went through other practices of religion. But still, he's asking Jesus, how do I get eternal life? How do I get God to love me and embrace me forever? Now the man, he had a right spirit. He wasn't a bad guy. He had some humility. He immediately knelt in front of Christ when he came up to talk to him. And that is the manner of a sinner who comes to approach Jesus. A manner of humility. 
right-spirited righteousness. And that man had that. And he came seeking the right thing in our Christian tradition. He came seeking eternal life. Some people search for wealth, for health, for more education, for other things, but we can't forget that the important thing to search for in life is to search for a relationship with God and an eternal life through a belief in Jesus Christ. And the man, finally, he came to the right place, didn't he? He came to Jesus. He came to Jesus. And we should learn from him because if we need spiritual help, we will not find it on the street corner of a material world. So what was the young man offered? What did Jesus offer to give him? Well, the first thing he was offered by being there with Christ is he was offered a savior. Jesus didn't argue theology with him or criticize him. He simply offered himself. He said, come and follow me. What a friend we all have in Jesus. He can be the solution to every problem, the answer to our questions, the satisfaction for our needs. He is our best friend, and we must take advantage of that wonderful friendship that we have. He came to save us, and he continues to come to save us from our sins, to wash them away, and to take us to him. Take us unto his family and ultimately write our name in the eternal book of life. The young man was offered a cross. Take up your cross and follow me. Get rid of all your earthly possessions and then follow me. But he realized that the cross meant giving up his money. And he decided, nope. I'm not going to do it because money was what he loved best. So he said no to Jesus. He turned tail because wealth stood between him and what Jesus stood for and what Jesus offered. So what stands between us and Christ? What stands between you and your Lord? Are there things that are in the way? Are there things that are blocking your connection with Christ? Are there things that you can give up behaviorally, otherwise? Jesus comes to give us a salvation and to guide us spiritually through life and to guide us with love ultimately into heaven. But sadly, some people don't get it. They don't care. They can't love him for some reason or anything he has to offer. Especially when he offers the cross. And the young man was, in that respect also, offered a home in heaven. Jesus Jesus told them that if he would follow him, he would have treasure in heaven. And he was promising that by following me, when he came to the end of his life journey, he would, in fact, attain heavenly eternal life. So what did the young man do in the story? Well, as it said right in the verse 22, when he heard what Jesus had said, he was shocked and he went away grieving because he had so many possessions. He rejected the true Savior and walked away from a path to eternal life. He wanted it, he wanted the eternal life, but he wanted to be saved on his own terms because in his eyes he had things, he was good. But what Jesus was offering was too much of a loss for him. 
So he turned away. And it was over very quickly. He made his decision and his fate was sealed. He walked away in sorrow. No wonder. He had made probably the most awful mistake in his life. He's not laughing, as the story tells us. He's grieving. And he drifts away into oblivion in a bitter sadness. So it's kind of a sad story in a way. The story of loss. The story of opportunity missed. Now my dream is this. My dream is that if you, you personally, met a young man like this, if a man like this came up to you in Hannaford's parking lot, and you knew that he was adrift, he was sad, he was looking for that spiritual void to be healed and connected with. I know that you would see in his eyes that he was dejected. And I know that you would reach out and put your hand on his shoulder. And after you had found out what was troubling him, you would say, come, let's go back and talk to Jesus. Let, us, let me take you to Jesus because he is the most forgiving savior. He's a great man. He is a man of boundless compassion. And I know Jesus loves you because I know Jesus loves me. And I know Jesus is waiting for you. So come, let us go and see him. He will save you, make you whole, and give you a life eternal. Now, that's what a disciple of Jesus Christ would do. Jesus, at the end of our gospel reading today, reminds us of this. And he also reminds us of the reward for following him. When he says, truly I tell you, there was no one who has left their house or their family or their fields or their crops for my sake and for the sake of my gospel, who will not receive a return back a 100-fold and in the age to come will receive eternal life. The young man did not follow Jesus. Will we? Let us pray. Loving God of infinite patience and wisdom. We come to you this day with so many things that claim our time, our energy, our treasure, our very lives. We are easily drawn away from serving you by enticements of the world, enticements of money and easy living and comfort, just like the rich young man in our scripture story we are sometimes owned by our possessions, held captive by our treasures. But you, our loving Lord, you continue to offer to us healing and hope. You seek to transform our lives from a captivity to freedom in witness and in service to you. We look at the world and we are stressed by a world where there is so much warfare, strife, disease, and hate. And we sometimes become overwhelmed by those pressures and stresses. Oh God, help, help us place our lives and our trust in you, knowing that with your help, wonderful things can be accomplished, which can provide hope and peace for ourselves and others. Give us courage and strength to truly be disciples 
of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we ask this in his name. Amen. Now let's take a moment to offer our joys and concerns uh, and lift prayers for ourselves, our families, our church and our country, um, and also share any moments where God has crossed our path and influenced us this week. And I will lift a, a joy of having returned from a wonderfully happy family wedding in uh, Cape Cod last weekend. My niece, my sister's youngest, uh, married a wonderful young man who is a veterinarian. Hear that, Faith? Uh, and uh, uh, they're just two happy, cheerful, great people. And they're uh, made for each other. They've known and dated since high school. And they're both now out of graduate school and uh, living a wonderful life together. So it was a, a wonderful setting on, of the beach with the waves behind. And it, it, was, it was a really wonderful joy to be with my family. Lord, hear my prayer. Holly. Prayers for hope and peace for the family, for the wife and family of Jericho Christensen, whose funeral at Wake Funeral was this week. Just, uh, he touched the lives of everybody that just happened that he was in contact with. And so I hope that the family will find peace and heal. Lord, hear our prayers. And let us pray for all those who, who grieve and those. May God's blessing and strength be with them. Diane? Yes, I've got a prayer. Uh, Bill Ramsey's uh, oldest son, Richard, is in the hospital. He's in the Hoover Hospital. He went there yesterday to check in. Oh, okay. Let us, okay, let us pray for Richard and all the. Ramsey family who always need our God's love and prayer. And Hilda was recently in the hospital, it says, yeah. well. So prayers for all of the Ramsey families. God's healing touch. Lord, hear our prayers. Walter. My name is Russell Hanley is in the hospital in intensive care, having a hard time breathing. They're thinking maybe pneumonia. I didn't hear anything about COVID, thank goodness. Uh, Rosie Mature, Mastriano, uh, her son died this last week uh, in just an ugly accident in the house. Uh, and Brittany is in the hospital for tests, continual tests. They just can't find out what's wrong. These are well, prayers offered by Mylene. These are prayers offered. Prayers for Mylene's friends who, uh, who need God's support and love. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our Friends on Zoom, if, if any of you would like to lift uh, prayers, it's good to see you all. Uh, we see uh, Alan, Patty, Bucus, we see Jackie um, and Carmen and uh, uh, and Ruth. So, uh, any, any anyone from our Zoom uh, congregation have uh, anything that they would like to lift in prayer today? Ruth. Continued prayers for our continued prayers for Bob Hubbard, who's not doing too well. He fell so many times and had so many bruises and things. So keep him in your prayers, please. Lord, hear my prayer. Did you hear it? Anyone else? Okay. Yes, you did.
our prayers now and lift them up to the Lord, those that we have said aloud, those that are still in our hearts as we pray to God. Let us pray. Loving and merciful God, we are here with you in your holy church. We lift these prayers of supplication and lift them with praise and thanks for our creation and our well-being in your world. We walk our mission and life of faith in the hopes that we can follow the teachings and example of Jesus Christ in all that we do. Help us, O oh Lord, to achieve this and walk with us. On this World Community Sunday, we recognize that we are linked in faith by Christians around the globe of many denominations in many, many countries. As we celebrate the Lord's Supper today, let us remember that bond, that bond of love and common faith that we enjoy in Christ Jesus. Help us along our road and help us to be an example of Christian love to all we need. Christian love and witness to the doubting young people that we may meet as in our gospel story today. And we ask all this in your name, triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord's Supper uh, is, is found uh, in liturgy on page 12 of your uh, Methodist hymnal. And the congregational responses will also be in the screen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and before one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for a moment in silence. Amen. Now hear this good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us share the peace of the Lord with one another.
take a moment and express our love and support for our church and our ministries in this community and around the world, especially on this World Communion Sunday. Our special offering will now be taken. Okay, please stand for the singing of the doxology. Praise God from who? Continue with our worship uh, on page 13 with a great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and at all times to give thanks to you, God Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. And on this day of blessing, on this day of world communion around the globe, with all faithful Christians everywhere, we lift our hearts in this joyous union as we celebrate Holy Communion with our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving, as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us to pray so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For those of you on the Zoom broadcast at this time, uh, please take the bread and your cup and join in the supper as we serve to the congregation. be on the road with Christ in all that we do. We are so grateful to have communed with the blood and body of Christ in this holy sacrament. Let us keep our ears attuned to his message and follow his example in all that we do. We are so grateful for these gifts let them be inside our hearts as we move forward and go from this place today. Let us be Christ to all that we meet. We have shared the supper of the Lord in all that we do and for all that we are. We thank God for this with our whole hearts. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is... Cry of my heart, it's in the faith we sing, number 2165. 2165, yes. this is the cry of my heart. You may sing.
us go forward with joy and peace in our hearts, the love that we have felt with Christ in our sacrament today. And now may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. In his name we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful day in a week. It was a beautiful service. Beautiful service and the altar is lovely. Yes, it is. Beautiful. Good morning, Al. You're welcome. God bless everyone. Yes, you too. Have a great week. You too. Bye. Have a great week.